How we can quantify your resume and your behavioral questions. This is a question I get a lot from clients. They get very confused and oftentimes it is why their resume is in the bottom 50, 60 percentile. When in reality, this is something that you do already in your job. You just have to communicate it. By the end of this video, you're going to have five frameworks to show what kind of impact you really made in your business. And let's do this treadmill edition. So let's jump in. How we can quantify our resume, our behavior questions, our impact. It's going to be a short one, but if you haven't watched the other behavior questions or the resume videos, we'll put a link in the description and you can go there as well. So number one, costs. So when I say costs, this is typically what en engineers think of. They say, hey, we have this, you know, ETL pipeline. Right? We have this data pipeline that we built, and it is using up 10 hours of processing every day. Right, And for any engineers, you already know 10 hours of processing means you know, a, a cost for all of that processing power. So if you can find a way to build the same pipeline for five hours, right, then that means you basically just cut the cost in half. Right, so this is a very simple one. This could be anything like took the SQL query, right? This is a very simple one, but I took the SQL query, I optimized it, right? That's the word. I optimized it. It was able to run in half the time. And because of that, the compute, that's the very technical term, the compute was cut in half. And because the compute was cut in half, that means the bill that we got was cut in half, right? It's kind of like saying, hey, I have electricity that I use every day. I have a light that I use every day in my home. I'm going to use it half the time. I'm going to turn off the light and use it 50% of the time, which means your light bill, electricity bill, will be 50% less. So that's really simple. That's the one that most engineers are able to get. Now, the second one, engineers know less, but it's still pretty frequent. This is called labor. So what does labor mean? Well, very simple, right? This is a, another word for it is automation. And so for example, you have to think that, hey, when I create this report and automate this report, how much time am I saving? And I'll give you one example in my own business, right? We have uh, salespeople, right? Well, salespeople have to do manual submission of their activities at the end of every day, right? And so one of the things that they were doing was saying, hey, this is how our conversation went with this prospect, that prospect, etc." But what we figured out is that, let's just take this as an example, if we have 15 reps and we each are spending 30 minutes a day, that means that they're probably spending seven hours per day. And again, let's just say they work 20 hours a month. This is 140 hours per month, right? And so automating that report alone, let's just say that somebody getting paid 100 bucks an hour, right? To keep it simple, that's 14 grand in savings per month. So that means per year, you know, again, I know the math is wrong, but let's just say this one task that took somebody maybe a few hours to do, to implement, saved the company $200,000 in man hours in labor. That's called automation. That's how you remove the human element out of it to cut costs in terms of labor. Um, and again, it doesn't mean you just cut the people, right? It doesn't mean you fire them. What it means is now they have more time to do other revenue generating activities. So very simple. That's number two. That is labor. Number three, we are going to do Users. So what does users mean? How do you quantify your impact in terms of users? So with users, what you want to do is you want to quantify how many people are using your product, your service, right? And so, for example, if you create a dashboard, And you have, let's say, you have 20 dashboards. 
at the company, right? Sorry for the sloppy handwriting. Well, the reality is there's going to be some dashboards that are more popular among your direct reports, your team members, your colleagues, your bosses, right? So if you can say, hey, I was in the top, you know, top three of dashboards because it had 100 people looking at it every day and they viewed it on average three times a day, right? So 100 people three times a day, that means it got, you know, whatever, 300 views right per day so you can say hey this generated 10,000 views per month believe it or not this is a really good way for you to quantify your impact and tell your bosses hey I'm working on things that matter to the company because then we can say hey these things had other downstream impacts and we'll talk about that in number five but 10,000 views and then you can say well on average right on average most dashboards get about a thousand views you know, per month or whatever. And then you're saying, hey, those 10,000 views are really, really impactful. So this is one a lot of people I don't think think about user slash usage or another word for this in the tech world is engagement, right? And everybody kind of has this idea of engagement as in like, hey, how are my, you know, customers engaging with my product? But the reality is if you're an engineer or an analyst, Sometimes your customers are actually your colleagues, your employees, your direct reports, your bosses, your stakeholders, etc. So when you view it, you view at it from that lens, meaning they are your customers. This is one metric that I think most engineers don't think about. So moving on, the fourth is members, and this is actually related to the above. Right? If we know that usage and engagement is one thing, we also know that members, meaning how many people and teams use your product. And I'll give you an example. If you're a data analyst, the example above is, you know, uh, the example above is relevant, the dashboard. But if you're a data engineer, the example I would use is the table, right? If you create a table, you created a pipeline to generate that table, right? How many people are using it, right? How many queries per day, right? Like how many times are people doing an activity on that table? Right. And by the way, if you have a CRM, if you're a sales team, it's the same thing. How many people are going to that report? How many people are refreshing it? Right. I have a dashboard, <laughs> not to, you know, call out employees, but I have a dashboard that the data is always wrong or it's not updated. Right. Or it's just doesn't look that good. So the brain doesn't process it that easy. So I view it maybe once a month. Right. That dashboard is a lot less impactful than a different dashboard we have here. That is like the whole team looks at it every single day. A, a easy leadership table tab, right? So that kind of stuff, it, it matters because how many people are looking at it, how many activities and engagement people have with that table, for example, right? It matters. So it's not just people, it could also be teams, it could also be queries, but it can also be what I call cross functional teams. And this is a big one because if you work for a big tech company, right, and you have your one little group right here, right, whatever, let's say you're working on marketing, right? Well, the reality is if you build a table here, then other cross functional teams are like, wait, I want to use that table, right? That matters. And so if you're looking for promotion, this is how you tell your team, your boss, we have other, uh, we have other teams other organizations using my table because they found it so impactful. And then inside of this, you might have 100 people here, 100 people there, 100 people here. Now you have 300 people in a really big tech company using your table, which is often the case if you really build something of value. So just keep that one in mind. And let's go to number five. Number five is revenue. And this is where this one is hard for engineers and data analysts. 
because they're like, oh, you know, a salesperson can say, hey, I, you know, instead of making 200 grand in sales this month, I made 300 grand. That was a 50% improvement because, you know, this AI tool that I started using started doing this and then my sales went up by 50%. That's really easy to quantify. Marketing, same thing. Hey, the return on ad spend went from 2x to 4x because of this one little tweak in the ad, it doubled everything. So this one is one that I see engineers and analysts always say, oh, I don't know how to quantify it. I don't have to quantify it. You can quantify it. Okay, so how would we quantify revenue? Remember in step number three, when I said the downstream impact or even step number four? Well, the reality is you can always say things like, hey, I created this dashboard or this table, which led to this business decision, right? Or this business insight, right? And that business decision, that business this insight led to, you know, some sort of lift, some sort of increase in revenue, in profit, etc. Here's where most engineers mess up. They don't know how to connect the business. They don't know what stakeholders are talking about behind closed doors to make those decisions based on the data they're looking at. And I get it. Some companies, some teams, maybe they're doing it wrong because they're not including the analyst or the engineer in those meetings. When in reality, they should probably be the ones getting most of the business knowledge inside of their brain because if they're able to know what the business is trying to do, then the analyst and the engineer can do their job better and more efficient based on what the business goal is. And so this one's a little, sounds like a no duh. And this is what most people think they need to do. But it's also the one that I see analysts and engineers having the trouble doing the most. So how would you actually go about finding that impact? It sounds simple, <laughs> but oftentimes just ask. Ask your colleague, ask your manager, ask your manager's manager. Doesn't matter. Just ask. And this is where I think engineers and analysts struggle because they are typically tend to be less soft skills and they typically tend to be a little more introverted. But I have a mentor that always says this, the world does not, the world does not reward overly introverted people. So just ask, you'll find your quantitative impact and I hope this helps.